Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian here in Huntsville, Alabama at the Association of the United States Army's annual Global Force Symposium here in uh, Huntsville. Number one winter gathering of U.S. Army leaders from around the world as well as industry thought leaders and media. Our coverage here is sponsored by L3 Technologies and Leonardo DRS. And it's our absolute pleasure to have the very first X-Tech Search uh, winners, uh, the first grand prize winners uh, from uh, Adranos, uh, which is a very, very cool company. Chris uh, Stoker is the CEO uh, of the company, uh, which was founded in uh, 2015 and, and consists of uh, exactly two of you, and Brandon Terry, uh, PhD, rocket scientist, boiler maker from uh, the illustrious Purdue University, one of the nation's uh, greatest engineering schools. And I'm sorry, it's just really, really cool always meeting a rocket scientist in Huntsville, Alabama. That's all I've got to say. Um, so Chris, uh, talk to, and, and you guys won the $200,000 prize. Uh, uh, Jeff uh, White, the Principal Deputy uh, Assistant Secretary of the Army for uh, Acquisition Technology and Logistics, uh, just awarded you uh, this, uh, and it was an Army-wide, uh, or rather I should say, 300 companies neck down eventually to, to pick you guys as the as the grand prize winners. So Chris, tell us a little bit about the company, how you guys were formed and what do you guys do and how did you pick this ast astronomically cool name for the company? Well, sure. So what the company does is develop, we're developing high performance rocket motors for missiles and other firing systems to extend their range so that we can be more effective on the battlefield. And it, it originally started at Purdue University with Dr. Terry where he was sort of trying to find a solution to another problem and he sort of stumbled upon this one and found, wow, this is a rocket motor propellant that can dramatically increase the range of a lot of firing systems. Why has no one done this? And so from there, we've kind of grown. We've been able to raise some money, and, and this has been huge for us to, to help put us on the map so we can make more progress. And uh, Adranos, very cool name. Sure. Tell us about the source. Yeah, so we wanted to do something sort of under the Greek god umbrella which is common to, to the rocket world, and no one had chosen Adranos, and so we looked up Adranos, and he's a Greek god of fire who lives in a volcano, and we're <laughs> a, an energetics company, you know, launching rockets, so it, it fit perfectly. And the, the name of our first rocket was the Etna rocket. Very good. Which is a, a volcano that Adranos lives in, so right. pretty exciting. Uh, that is, uh, that is uh, absolutely uh, fantastic. Obviously, Greeks getting to Cyprus and, uh, excuse me, Sicily, uh, where uh, Mount uh, Etna is. So, uh, Brandon, tell us a little bit about, so like every great innovation, you're trying to solve another problem, and then you end up with something that's a groundbreaking discovery. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, the problem you were trying to solve, but also foundationally what makes uh, your new propellant and approach better than what uh, we've been using basically since the 1940s and 50s. So I was working on another rocket propellant where we were doing a different fuel additive for salt propellants and looking at how that works. And as I was looking at how that propellant works, it gave me some ideas to try a bunch of other fuel additives that could potentially have some great impact. And, uh, you know, in the great age of today where we can run, you know, thousands of simulations very quickly, I started just running lots of simulations and this outlier came out that looked really great. So I ran more and more simulations, and after I'd run thousands of them, I finally went to my PhD advisor and said, look at this, and we both said, why has nobody done this? And uh, so we did a lot of testing and uh, found that not only is the math correct from the simulations, but there's a lot of great added benefits. And the reason why this works so much better is we were effectively getting more energy per piece of propellant, per mass of propellant. and. Uh, and one of the great benefits of that is, you know, traditional salt propellant has harmful chemicals in it, hydrochloric acid. And effectively how we get our better performances, we're getting rid of that hydrochloric acid and letting us use all that hydrogen that was going into a toxic acid previously now can get used for the benefit of propulsion. And uh, anytime you have more hydrogen, you get better pr propulsion. Exactly. And, uh, and it's not, is it uh, calcium perchlorate based or, or not, uh, the propellant? It's ammonium perchlorate based with uh, a metal fuel. Right which you're not going to share with me? Uh, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Uh, Chris, uh, talk to us uh, a little bit. That's very, very cool, by the way. Um, and I, I, I wanted to get into this specific impulse and stuff like that, but we can talk about that in a minute. So uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what's uh, what's next, right? I mean, this is a really great infusion of cash, $200,000 uh, that goes to the company. You guys have been successful in getting to where you are in part because of investment, but also in, in winning competitions. So what's the next phase? What does this, uh, this award enable you to do as you guys continue? continue to try to become the uh, next giant of the future. Sure, so building on the previous x -Tech award, the $120,000 award from the last round, we used that to do our first live launch, our flight demonstration, to prove that it flies. 
And so now what we need to do is prove that it can be stored for long periods of time, prove that we can scale to bigger and bigger rockets. So we're really effectively going to go big. That's really cool. Uh, so talk about uh, big and scalability uh, and um, you know the order of magnitude power that you are producing that other guys aren't. All right, so effectively what we're doing is, uh, like I said earlier, we're, we're getting more pressure, more thrust you know, per unit mass of propellant. And uh, the, the great thing we've also found is because of the way we burn, we also get higher efficiency at the smaller scale. So we were, allowed to, we were able to not only work with really big motors, but we can actually work very effectively with small motors, which traditional propellants have a hard time doing. And then as we you know, get to bigger motors, uh, we still have our, you know, our base, based on the chemistry, how much more performance we get. And we'll, uh, effectively, this allows us to use this propellant in the, you know, the smaller rocket motors, from rocket-assisted projectiles all the way up to you know, our nuclear arsenals. It can be used in all of the systems. Um, that's uh, that's uh, extraordinary. Um, so, what is um, you know what is your growth plan? Where do you guys want to be uh, in another ten years? And what are some potential adjacencies in other markets? Right. I mean, when you look at um, you know there there are, there's always something always applies and opens up another door, right? And you guys can't just be looking at it. Although this is a really really good idea in order to be able to capitalize on it. But where do you want to be in a couple of years? And sort of what's what's the next sort of technological breakthrough that you guys are looking sure, for? Sure. Let's start with adjacencies. So. We think there could be a big impact on the small sat space launch world. A lot of the smaller rockets being developed are, are liquid based. And a lot of them also need to potentially scale their size. And solids could be good for that. And we think we can provide a cost effective solution that can help them expand their payload. Um, and so what we think we want to be is that we want to grow our technology. We want it to get acquired by the Department of Defense and used in actual systems so that we can increase our effectiveness in the battlefield. And whether we do that through manufacturing, or whether we do that partnering with a large player that has the capability of manufacturing already, and we're open to that. We're open to that whatever, whatever way is going to help us get in the game as fast as we can so we can get this capability to our soldiers. And in, in terms of uh, future developments, you can't be uh, through uh, tinkering and trying to figure out how to improve this. So what's going to be uh, some of the next technological challenges you want to surmount? as you try to get your uh, image in, in bronze put next to Werner von Braun's down here somewhere. <laughs> so at this point, our next technological things that we're working on is still on the same propellant that we're working on now. Uh, we can optimize the formulation for specific platforms, whether you want high density or just really high performance. There's different, different platforms want different things. And so we're going to be optimizing the formulation. And as my partner Chris said, uh, once you optimize it for a particular type of platform, then it's putting it into those platforms. And there's a lot of work that has to go into that, and so that's our primary focus moving forward. And uh, um, it, you know, and obviously from a strategic standpoint, right? I mean, this is great because it's another source for uh, solid propellant, which which has always been kind of the challenge about how the United States does that from a strategic perspective. So you got to answer for me: What is it that motivated you to become a rocket, uh, sci a real rocket scientist, not somebody who's a BS rocket scientist, like an actual <laughs> genuine real rocket scientist? It actually all came down to when I was 12 years old. In fact, I'm wearing a Eagle Scout pin right here. And I did Space Exploration Merit Badge, and we launched a little rocket. You know, it's about that big. And I was uh, An Estes, Estes a little, rocket? A little Estes rocket, yeah. A little C-65 on a homemade rocket motor, or a homemade uh, rocket that I built. And I absolutely loved it. And my dad, who is an engineer, and he goes, oh, great, something nerdy I can do with my son. So I started building bigger and bigger rockets. By the time I graduated high school, we had launched rockets that were in excess of 10 feet tall. And uh, F, F motor, what, what motors were you using? Uh, you know, upwards of, you know, J and above. Wow. Wow. And so, um, and I determined by the time I graduated high school, I really liked that business end, that rocket motor. Uh, you know, I only built the rockets so that I could put the rocket motor in something. I, I and, uh, so I went to you know school to do just that. Fantastic. Guys, uh, thanks very much. Brandon Terry, PhD, Boilermaker, uh, who has uh, you know, found a revolutionary answer that changes uh, solid fuel. And Chris Stoker, uh, the CEO of the company, Adranos. Great name, guys. Uh, honor, re real honor to meet you. And I wish you all the very best. Uh, and, uh, and look forward to A, seeing your bust on uh, the Rocket <laughs> Hall of Fame uh, one of these days. And one of these days, you guys being right up at that first tier where it's like Boeing, Adranos, you know, the, you know, and all of these companies that think they're big now who are going to be small compared to, the, to you guys in the future. Thanks very, very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.